much love. Oh, you better not. Can you just take it out of my head? Pray for me. You pray for Do yourself. Do it in the bathroom for me. You pray for yourself. Jesus, please help me. And I said, please get this middle finger out of my brain. And I was like, I don't want to learn about it anymore. So can you please help me? And I said, I don't want to learn the middle finger anymore. I don't even know what the middle finger does. And I was like, please get this out of my middle finger. Now, please, please, I'm still your child. I really need you to get this out of my head. You forgot amen. 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 Did it work? It's only when it's sleep. Okay. It's just waiting for me for one day. Well, one day, but not yet. They're waiting. He's waiting until I'm done traveling. And then I need to get everything. And then I need to get everything. And then I will get to the day. And then it's not gonna work, and then I'm gonna learn the again. And she, and he's gonna come back to me and put the middle finger back to my head, and then I'm gonna learn it every day. And that's what's going on. I know what he did. Oh, wasn't that so precious? Poor little thing. Poor little Tink Tink. Little Tink Tink. <sighs> Unfortunately, though, as cute as that may have been, it also demonstrates the poison of the indoctrination of children into religions. I remember going through something similar with my middle child. Come to find out that she was cursing like a sailor. And not because the words that she was using were curse woo, putting a curse on you it was just inappropriate language for a child in school but as a parent who does not indoctrinate their children into religion instead of teaching my child oh just pray and Jesus will magically make this go away from you uh, cursing because you've learned it by other children in your school because she didn't learn it from her parents. That's for dang sure. Uh, it was a point of, it was a very important point for me never to curse in front of my children, for their mother, their uncles, their cousins, their grandparents to never curse in front of my child. Uh, I would literally, there were certain words, even like the N word, uh, I instructed people in my family that if you were to use that in and around my child, you will cease to be around my child. Because it wasn't words that I wanted them to learn in the sense of just common language. So instead, I taught them as they got older what those words meant. And when I came to discover that one of my children was in school, just all the words, that all the profanity that she can come up with, I sat down with her and taught her what each one of those words meant and why they were considered offensive. And by teaching my children what they mean and why they're offensive, my children didn't use those words to the best of my knowledge. Now, I know as they got older, they still were using them as teenagers because it becomes common speech for teenagers to do so. I did it myself. But now that they're all adults, those are not words that my children use because now they have matured and they understand why they shouldn't use those words for in 99% of the situations. But there are some times when a good word gets across the meaning that I want them to get across. But as this child said, she prayed and the mother was like, pray for yourself. And she prayed for herself and did it work. And the child was like, only when I'm asleep. Exactly, only when you sleep. Because these prayers don't work. That parent should have been educating her child on to as far as what the middle finger word, the word for the middle finger, what it actually means, why it's offensive, and explain it to her at the age level that she's at so that she can understand it. And then that child may come to realize why she should stop using that word. And then when it's, 
when that logic and that understanding is there, then the brain will start to recognize why not to use that word and then the child will overcome it themselves, not sit up there and just hope and wish. I mean, and you even got this in your Christian Bible where you can do this. All right, for all my Christians out there who, for some odd reason, watch these videos. Before Cain killed Abel, this God told Cain, told Cain that sin crouches at your door and you have the power to overcome it. Not through prayer, not through sacrifice, not through anything, but himself, that Cain had the power to overcome the sin that was living in his heart, mind, at the time frame when he was angry that this God rejected his vegetable, his, his vegan platter. So even for Christians, there is no need for your prayers when you have the power to overcome whatever it is your mind is telling you, whatever it is you've been conditioned into accepting as your normal behavior. To me, that parent failed. That parent failed that child to give them something that this child will be able to use in life in multiple situations. But what do you guys think? Comment, like, share, subscribe. And always remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.